So where you go when you ask me now? And I'll see that I see you when the dies begin to smell her But she's smell her no That's how far I got before.
Congratulations to the uh, the rock choir. We did a fantastic job, and um, really enjoyed the music that they uh, that they did. Other than that, uh, I bid you all a, a good afternoon, and we'll um, start getting these tracks out as they ring, so you can catch me on on your day. But thank you for listening. Going, Caroline? It's going okay, I think. The rain has stopped. Uh, got lots, lots for sale. <laughs> Raymond was launched and built in 1958, uh, so that makes her, what, 65 years old. But the boat you're looking at was actually rebuilt in the year 2000. Because the friends of Raymond, who now are custodians of the boat, were formed in 1996 to save the boat from rotting away, from a watery grave, if you like. And in the intervening four years, they raised the money to have the boat... F their intention was to restore the boat, but when the boat came out of the water in 1998, basically she fell to pieces. She was too rotten to restore, so she was rebuilt. And the only things that remain from the original boat and what you're looking at now is the ironwork. All the ironwork is, is from the old boat, but all the timber is new, and so it's, it, the Raymond was rebuilt, if you like, in 2000. Expensive. But she's but 23 years on for a wooden boat. She's still she's now quite an old lady again, <laughs> and needs a great deal of work to uh, uh, to to preserve her, which is what which is what the trust does. Yeah. So we are here 
at, uh, at the gathering not only to show our boats off to people, which is what we want people to take an interest, but we're also here to fundraise because every penny we raise, either through our collection buckets or our sales, is spent on the boats. And we spend, on average, around eight to 10,000 pounds a year on the boats and could spend, a, and need to spend a great deal more than that. And that's just maintenance and running costs? That's, yeah, maintenance running costs. A small amount of what we raise obviously goes towards the running of the charity, but we, uh, but the vast majority of the money is spent directly on the boats. Mm. And so what, what we raise, we spend. I mean, people don't give us money to keep in the bank. People give us money to spend on the boats. People yeah. come and look at the boats, see what we're doing, love the look of the boats, give us money and, what, and they don't want us to hold it in the bank, they want us to spend it and that's what we do. Yeah. Might be um, just regular docking and maintenance, it might be much more uh, structural. I mean for example we've just had new, new tarpaulins, new cloths on the boats, we have just repainted the cabin of the, uh, of the motorboat Nutfield. Um, it just goes on and on and on mm. and that's what we do year in year out and so the fun bit if you like is is bringing the boats to festivals like this yeah. where people get to see our boats and we uh, we bask in the uh, <laughs> in the yeah. compliments that we receive but the important stuff <coughs> is, is is in the maintenance yeah. and without the maintenance without the fundraising and the maintenance then the charity simply wouldn't yeah. exist that's room and Dan Nutfield yeah, yeah, we, we, we acquired Nut, Nutfield and Raymond worked together as a pair carrying coal from uh, Badsley Colliery near Atherstone to Keely and Tong's Jam Factory in South Hall in West London, week in, week out. For the last two years of their working lives, those boats worked together. Nutfield had replaced an earlier motorboat called Roger that was wooden. <clears throat> so they really were a working pair for two, for two years. And we were able to acquire Nutfield in 2003, uh, and so that's 20 years ago. And and but both boats need a great deal of looking after. Yeah. That is historic boats. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, no, you're welcome. Brilliant. And uh, it's only a city car. It's not a Tesla, obviously. So uh, the range is about 72 miles, and it will do 63 miles an hour. Uh, charges up half an ordinary 13 amp socket. Um, there are plans to put this into production again in a slightly restyled body form, though this seems to have been delayed by the recession. But we'll see. Thank you, Harry, for that introduction. As the owner of this rather unusual car, I'm sure you've never seen one before, you might never see one again. So take a close look at Harry's it's a very special Lear electric car.
looked like yesterday, but there's not as much on the table. It's at stand, so I'm going to try to see what you're doing. I look forward to going on it. Next door. Yeah. Oh, so an old, so I'll just give you a photo of you. Right, that'll do. Lovely. Mm, yeah. Well, how's it going? We're doing all right. Our target is about two hundred pounds. We need another twenty-five quid. All right. Uh, to get to that target, and um, <clears throat> I'm sure we'll do it. That's good. Before the day's out. Great. Oh, it's all part of being a pirate. You can't be a pirate with all of your parts. Being a pirate is all fun and games till somebody loses an eye. Oh, it stings like the blazes, it makes you pull faces, but you can't let your mates see you cry. Well, a dashing black patch will cover the hatch and make sure that the socket stays dry. Being a pirate is all fun and games till somebody loses an eye. Oh, it's all part of being a pirate. You can't be a pirate with all of your parts. Oh, it's all part of being a pirate. You can't be a pirate with all of your parts. Being a pirate is all fun and games till somebody loses a what's it. Having bothered to sprout it, you'll not be without it. So you're hoping the lookout soon spots it. Then the dock comes along and sews it back on, or he ties it up tight and he knots it. Being a pirate is all fun and games till somebody loses a what's it. Oh, it's all part of being a pirate. You can't be a pirate with all of your parts oh it's all part of being a pirate you can't be a pirate with all of your parts being a pirate is all fun and games till somebody loses a head it falls with a thud and it's covered in blood and your beard is all sticky and red you can't comb your hair because your head's over there and besides that by now you'll be dead being a pirate is all fun and games Till somebody loses a head. Oh, it's all part of being a pirate. You can't be a pirate with all of your parts. Oh, it's all part of being a pirate. You can't be a pirate with all of your parts. They, were, they could wear a set of shoes out in as little as four weeks. So there was a massive infrastructure that went along to make the horses on the canals work. There'd be blacksmiths, uh, vets, and all, all the other associated things for providing the food and the shelter that the horses needed. And, and they would all sell their wares, and that's how they made their living. So the horses were such a magnificent animal, an early part of the canal's development. And uh, then obviously along came the infernal, oh sorry, internal combustion engine, which started to take over the, the role of the horses. The horses couldn't compete with that. So um, going through the locks, you still see on some of the older canals and older locks, there are um, uh, strapping posts and these were uh, used because the boats didn't have brakes. Um, the horse would get it going and move it forward, but they'd got to time it correctly for the stops. So uh, otherwise you would hit the bridge holes or the ga lock gates. So there was a lot of skill involved in driving and working the horses on the canals. So that's a little bit about the history of the canals and uh, the, the use of the horse at that time so thank you very much we're just going to be over behind the ice cream van so if you want to come over and see ebony and stroker and um, any more questions then i'll try and answer them but i'm certainly not an expert thank you very much oh she she's after food and that's one reason that she's wearing the ear protectors. Oh.
thought that was just the fashion. Well, yes it is, <laughs> but no it's not. It's a twofold thing. It protects her ears because obviously her ears are, are warm and damp. Yes. And the midges love to live in there and bite yes. her. And plus she, the fact she works on voice command. Oh, right. So if she's pulling a, car, a, a canal boat, yeah. we want her to listen to us. Yeah. So the last thing we want is then midges to get in her ears and, and cause any distractions. So by covering her ears like that, it stops the midges. Yes. And she listens to us then. I'm going to lock myself away in the shed and, uh, and make these through the winter and then get out over the summer and try and sell a few. Yeah, keeps me out of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> well done. I bet a good sound comes out there as you go, Bob. Not bad. We've all got pickups as well. That's getting me going, you know, lad. Yeah, I bet you know C6 Steve, didn't you? Ah, oh, best mates. Yeah. <laughs> I'll bet you do. <laughs> what, what do we, I don't know what he played, but he's oh, he'll play anything, oh, anything, anything and everything. Anything. 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 He's got his old Dominican pickup truck there. Yeah. yeah. No, he's some, spot on. There's some character he is. <laughs> Sometimes he's got one string on him. Yeah. Yeah, but he gets the tune out of it. In there, you know, eh? Yeah. Great stuff. Great. Can Real ale. Excellent. From over there? Oh yes. Excellent. Yeah, they charged me for it though. Oh right. Yeah. You know, I thought uh, I thought with my, uh, my <laughs> they, they they just throw one at me, but okay. not, not long, to be. Not as to long be. As you're enjoying the day. Do you realise you're on candy camera? Yeah. Is that all oh, right? And that's all right. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Stay bright. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, hi there. Oh, hi there. Look, it's Christmas nearly. Christmas already? It is! Yeah. Auntie Maggie's homemade recipe. Still got minus from the time. Yeah. Yeah. Still got her, and then I've got Pepe. How are you doing? But the bottles, you know, you go. I'd love to get some of those. Okay, to be filmed, just briefly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what's with the back of the belt? I thought that might be quite active. Oh my god. I'll try to be. Can't smile, it'll be all fake. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Not so bad, is it really? <laughs> No, I just uh, get to live in the camera, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
turn him with his eyes, try not to jump on me, come back and bark at Mark. Mark do the show me command, where is he? And takes him to the injured person. Mark will, Spec will then get a reward, because this is all about gameplay and all about how we, it's all a game for the dogs. Therefore, um, they don't know any, they've got no emotion attached to what we do, because obviously, in reality, some of the things we find is not very pleasant. Once Spec's had his play, we'll do an, another version. You can see the little camouflage uh, area up there. And what this is called, that's called a pop-up. So the initial runaway that we've done teaches the dog to, to go and chase somebody, get the toy and then his play. And then the next stage of that is we will have somebody that pops up. This encourages the dog to start hunting. So rather than a visual, he will sh jump up, shout Spec's name, off he goes. All this is done so the dog is using his nose into the wind. There goes Spec. He should bark at Mark. A little bit confused who's in red. <laughs> This is not a true reflection of what we do, it's just a basic example. Because our dogs, it gets a bit excited. There he goes, jumping on the body, make sure they're still alive. There he goes, barking at Mark. And what this has done is caused is creates a shuttle. The dog will have bells on, he'll find the missing person, come back to Mark, and then that distance can be up to half a half a kilometer.
Thank you. 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 Thank you.